I've got my box from DigiKey with my capacitors and a couple of fuses that I bought to you to get this receiver repaired. I think I have all the parts I need, but who knows? Maybe I don't know what's really wrong. We'll try this and find out. Here are the capacitors I bought. Two big ones, 6800 microfarads, two small fuses, and one small 3300 microfarad capacitor. I just need to clean this whole area up so I can start soldering. Ta-da! So now I think I've got everything I need to start soldering. I've got my soldering iron, I've got my parts solder, and the needle nose pliers, and of course the receiver. So I'm just gonna move the camera and come in a little bit closer. There we go, that's a little better. Now we're just gonna put some light on and kind of move everything into place. Now we're going to start by removing the third capacitor, uh, which I had left in. I hadn't taken it out yet. It's the other one, just like this one. I'll show you from the other side on the top of the board here in a minute. KVR A70R by Kenwood. And so that's what I'm working on. I found some capacitors, three that I think are bad. Um, if you look right there, you can almost see a little bulge on the top and the other one that I took out already was even worse so I took those out and ordered some new capacitors from DigiKey well, here's the capacitor on the top side of the board that we are going to remove next before we can put the new ones in and I need to show you something that we're gonna do before we mess with the solder first so you see here's where the uh, old one was and there is glue not always but sometimes on these capacitors and other components they'll put glue on there which will prevent uh, any damage or uh, bad connections from vibrations uh, the glue kind of holds the components in place and so what we're gonna do here is just kinda cut and scrape away the glue around the bottom of this capacitor I'm gonna use uh, a knife I'm gonna use a knife uh, like this you want something that's pretty sharp I'm going to use some small flathead screwdrivers just have a really hard and sharp edge on the front uh, which really helps with just kind of pulling that glue out from where it is so that you can pull that capacitor off so that's what I'm going to do right now So, it's kind of a meticulous job, um, but you're kind of looking for to be able to see the green of the circuit board um, after, you, after you sort of cut away, peel away, uh, chip away this glue. So once you can see that, hopefully you can move the capacitor a little bit more and you can see a little bit more flex between it and the circuit, circuit board. You do want to be careful, don't do that too much. You don't want to damage anything. Um, but once you get to this point, you're probably close enough to where you can start trying to remove the solder uh, to pull it out. You just want to make sure that most of that glue is out of the way. It's a little flexible, and so once you start pulling on it, if there are tiny um, strings of glue still attached, um, they will probably pull away pretty easily. Um, yeah. But basically we're just going to start on the bottom of the board and it's a three lead capacitor it just uses two leads but then the third lead is a mounting point and so you have to disconnect all three of these leads and you have to unsolder all three of those to get the capacitor to come out of the front and what i do on a capacitor or resistor or anything uh, that's attached to a circuit board if it's uh, pretty tight like this 
And you kind of have to wiggle it out. And so you start with one, start with one lead, and uh, you get it hot. Kind of tug on the capacitor from the other side a little bit. Give it a little tug, and it'll pull out ever so slightly. And then you let it uh, set before you go to the next one. You kind of hold pressure on the capacitor, and then you go to the next lead, and you loosen it up by heating it. Uh, so you heat up the solder so that the lead loosens up, and then you tug on the capacitor again. Once it's hot, you kind of tug and leave it there. Let it set, and then you go to the next lead. So right now I have to go to three different leads. Usually you might just go back and forth between two, but now I've got three. So you heat up that last one and pull it out just ever so slightly and then let it set. And then slowly you're just going to wiggle the capacitor out of its position. So I just wanted to show you from the other angle how I go about wiggling it back and forth. So it's going to be pretty slow because you have to loosen the solder on each of the three leads. And in each time you loosen one, rock it back and forth. Rock it away from the one that's loose so that you're effectively pulling the lead slowly uh, out of the hole. So I'm going to loosen the solder on the bottom joint first. And so I'm going to push up on the capacitor and hopefully pop that loose once it's once it's loose there, and so you'll see it kind of come up. And so once it's up, I'll just kind of hold it there. You kind of heard the glue coming loose there. Uh, it wasn't anything breaking, just a little bit of glue coming loose. So that's solder has set again. Now I'm going to go to the next lead and push away from that lead. So I'll loosen the solder by melting it and push away and push it out like that, kind of wiggle it. You might be able to see in a second that the capacitor has already come up off the circuit board by at least a quarter inch. And so there's the first lead out. Now there are only two leads connecting it to the circuit board. Okay, now the bottom lead is out. Now there's only one lead connecting it. And there's our last lead. So all three of the leads are out almost. There we go, and there we go, and just like that. You just have to do it slowly and wiggle it back and forth until it comes out completely. Here is the new capacitor that we're going to put in. I might as well show that to you from this angle right now so you can see what we're going to be doing. And so uh, right here is a little positive sign, and that tells us that uh, the other side is negative. On a capacitor, the side with the line is always going to be the negative side of the capacitor and the side with the shortest lead is always going to be the negative side as well. Uh, you can look at your capacitor, it might have a plus or minus on it, but if you're not sure, the line is always negative and the short lead is always negative. And so we'll want to make sure and put it in the correct way, positive to positive, negative to negative, because they are one directional. Capacitors are one directional. I'm just going to slide it all the way in and then solder it in from the back side. Uh, and just holding it up like this. And I may add in uh, some silicone or some glue later uh, to hold it in place. But first, we will connect all the capacitors and then test it out. So we've got the capacitor sticking through, the leads sticking through those two holes on the bottom side of the board, um, both of the leads right here. And we're just going to solder them into place so that they are connected. And there we go, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm not gonna cut them off just yet. I think I will test it out first. And so right next to it here, we'll put the second capacitor in place. We just have to loosen up the solder just a little bit to let the leads come through. There we go, and slide that in place. And then we'll get some more solder and just Solder those on so that they're in a good spot. And there we go, we got those two in place. Just one more little one. So here is our last capacitor. I guess it's a little bit nicer than the other ones. It's supposed to be a little bit higher quality, but 
Uh, no matter. This should. It's still a pretty cheap capacitor. Should work just fine. So we've got the leads all the way through. Now just need to make sure there's enough solder to give it a good connection. There we go. And so to look at it from the top, we got our three new capacitors in. I'll give you a little bit of a close up on those. Like I said, there's no glue on them yet. I may come back and do that later, but for right now, uh, we just got them soldered in, so we're going to test it out, test it out first. You got the two, two big ones, the same size. Both of them are the same size exactly as the old ones. Um, 6,800 microfarads at 50 volts, and then the small one right there. It's a little shorter than uh, the old one that came out of it, but it's also the exact same as the old one, 3,300 microfarads at 25 volts and so now I'm gonna set up the receiver plug it in plug in a speaker and just see if that fixed it Okay, so first I'm gonna plug it in and hopefully there won't be any smoke after it's plugged in Well wait a second I don't see anything and then I'm gonna turn it on That was the lamp falling and put that back up that wasn't the receiver the receiver turns on which is what it did before which is fine so i'm going to turn the volume all the way down and then i'm going to plug in my auxiliary cord into my computer and then i'm going to play some music And it's doing the exact same thing it did before. It looks like it's working fine, but it's not making any noise. So, uh, maybe I didn't fix it. So there should definitely be some sound. And there is not. So, unless I'm missing something, I just uh, replaced those capacitors for nothing. I will look at this later and see if I'm missing something.